at a distance of 384,000 kilometers from Earth. The Moon is our closest celestial neighbor and our only natural satellite. Because of this, we've been able to gain more knowledge about it than any other body in the solar system, besides the Earth. Millions of people around the world look up at night and marvel at this bright glowing round object. But far fewer understand it. So today we shed some light on some of the moon's mysteries. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. For millennia, people were wondering what the moon is and how it got there. We've attached mythological descriptions to it and imagined all sorts of intriguing scenarios. In the last few centuries though, people have tried to search for scientific explanations. But it was only in the 1970s that we finally uncovered the biggest mystery of the moon, its origins. Between 1969 and 1972, six Apollo missions gathered and brought back moon rocks and dust. When they were analyzed, it was discovered that they were remarkably similar in age and content to earth rocks. The only way to explain this is if the moon was once a part of our own planet. 4.51 billion years ago, just 60 million years after the solar system formed, a mass-sized planet we call Theia collided with our own planet. This giant impact ejected an incomprehensible amount of debris into orbit. Those debris are what formed the moon. While this isn't the only hypothesis out there, it is the most accepted and the one that seems to explain best the measurements we made so far. From Earth, the moon has a very familiar face. And it's guaranteed that everyone, no matter where they live, saw the same face. This is why the myth of the dark side of the moon was born. But contrary to popular belief, there is no dark side. Both sides of our satellite receive the same amount of sunlight, it's just that we can only see one side of it. Why? Because the moon is in synchronous rotation as it orbits us. That means that it rotates about its axis in about the same time it takes to orbit Earth. Earlier in its history, the moon was much closer to us and rotated much faster. But its rotation slowed and became tidally locked in its current orientation due to Earth's much stronger gravity. Basically, there was a sort of gravitational friction between the two and the moon lost. The moon has no atmosphere, we all know that. Except that, technically, that's incorrect. There is a lunar atmosphere, it's just that it's so tenuous that most of the times it's compared to a near vacuum. The entire lunar atmosphere weighs just 10 tons, that's it. It's mostly a product of a constant bombardment of the soil by solar wind ions. These ions hit the soil at extreme speeds and eject particles, a process called sputtering. The lunar atmosphere contains sodium, potassium, argon, radon, helium and neon. Surprisingly, there are no traces of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon or hydrogen. I say that surprising because the regolith, or moon dust, is full of these elements. And it is not yet understood why this is the case. It's also worth mentioning that for about 70 million years, the moon's atmosphere was much thicker, about twice the thickness of that of present-day Mars. But due to a lack of magnetic shield and a weak gravity, that atmosphere was quickly stripped away by solar winds. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you one thing. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. And with that out of the way, we can move on to the next fact. Here's another fact I bet you never knew. The moon experiences earthquakes. Well, moonquakes to be precise. They were first discovered by Apollo astronauts who placed seismometers wherever they went. There are four types of quakes that occur. Thermal quakes happen when the lunar crust expands as the sunlight heats it up. Meteorite quakes occur, well, whenever there's an impact. Shallow and deep quakes most likely occur due to the gravitational pull of Earth, but we're not sure yet. 
These quakes are much less powerful than what we're used to, but their shaking can last for up to one hour. By now I hope you understand that this place is not as nearly as quaint as we tend to believe. Still, whenever you think of the moon, you picture a static, dead landscape where not much is going on. And technically speaking, the moon is indeed geologically inactive. So it should come as a surprise to you that the moon has a molten, iron-rich core just like Earth. Well, that's what we think, we don't really know. The inner core is small, but measurements suggest that it's at least partially molten. Around this core, there is a partially molten mantle, on top of which there is a 50 km thick crust. While the innards of the moon are way too small and cold to produce any geological events, it is worth noting that this satellite is not nearly as dead as it looks. What about tides? Is it true they are caused by the moon? Well, yes, it is. The explanation is relatively simple. The side of the Earth that faces the Moon experiences a slightly higher gravitational pull than the side that's on the opposite side. As a result, a tidal force is created that affects both the Earth's crust and its oceans. The crust, of course, experiences a less evident force, moving only a few centimeters towards the Moon at most. But our oceans, being a fluid, move more easily, so they bulge towards the moon, creating the familiar high and low tides. But this phenomenon also affects the moon, and the results are surprising. The Earth exerts the same type of tidal forces on the moon. But there's a law in physics that's inescapable. Conservation of angular momentum. As the two celestial bodies are locked in this gravitational dance, the high mass of the tidal bulges on Earth act as a torque in opposition to the Earth's rotation. This quite literally drains angular momentum and rotational energy from the Earth, slowing it down. But angular momentum is never lost, so it's transferred to the Moon. The result is that the Moon is very slowly pushed outwards, at a rate of 3.8 cm per year, while at the same time, the Moon's orbital speed is slowing down. While over time, and I mean lots and lots of time, this increase in distance would eventually become noticeable, I wouldn't worry too much about this. If left to run its course, eventually the tidal drag would result in a mutual tidal locking between the two objects. But on a universal scale, 3.8 centimeters is nothing, so it would take many, many billions of years until this would happen. And by that time, our Sun will have already become a red giant, engulfing both the Earth and the Moon. Still, it's pretty awesome, right? I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.